yourself? I'm a full devout alhamdulillah Muslim. Oh, mashallah. Okay, okay, excellent. Uh, so, I, I guess I don't need... <laughs> you don't need me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't need to uh, try the, the answers on you. Okay. No, but, but, but it's very interesting, right? Because I will check you in terms of... Cause Go it's, for it. Go no, for no, 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 it's, 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 yeah. not, it's not necessarily... Because I, I, I consider myself... I wouldn't call it a liberal Muslim at all or any way, shape, or form to be kind of outside the box of the general Islamic beliefs. I consider myself as a very, very devout Muslim. I read the Quran, pray five times a day, do my Ramadan, all, all aspects of things. There are certain things, again, not agree is the right term. But I, and again, update is also the not, uh, the, not the right term. I think, unfortunately, in this generation of free speech, human beliefs, I think people are misinterpreting certain aspects of the Quran and taking it literally. For example, let's just use this. Excuse me. I, I, I know we need to get to the lady, but let's just say, for example, Ramadan, right? If you travel more than, do you know the number and then you have to break fast? Uh, in terms of if you're a traveller, yeah? Yeah, that varies, doesn't it? Some say that you're a traveller when you leave. Well, if you're in London, when you leave the M25, you're pretty much a traveller then. So it depends. It, goes, it ranges between 32 kilometres to 80 kilometres. Usually some, some, some fatwas say that it's, you know, uh, it, 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 generally your city and if your city is around an 8 kilometre radius, yeah. you're like, I don't know. So. If you, if you really look back at where that came from, back in, you know, 1,400 years ago, they were on camels, the sun was three times probably this hot, they were going through desert, crossing cities, trying to get to places, and you know what happens? It's hard and people need to take water, and you know what? <coughs> During Ramadan, if you have to do that, it's okay to break your fast and drink water. So we can discuss that. I think we're, what we're doing is we're talking on level five. We're, we're let's assuming, go, let's go, let's yeah, yeah, that zero. God has already been proven, <coughs> Islam is already accepted, we're ready fasting, and then yeah. But, but I just want to let you know that... No, example, definitely, that, that would be really interesting. I, 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 can go, I can go to the M5 and go to, the, to, go, go, go to Manchester, right? I don't necessarily need to break my fast. I don't think I should. Yeah, we can discuss that, inshallah. We can discuss that. Yeah. All right, so um, you describe yourself as agnostic. Uh, in terms of your... Uh, sorry, what do you say? Said, okay, yeah, yeah. It's not something, honestly, that takes a whole lot of my oh, yeah. thought. I never find myself questioning my oh. beliefs or something. Not, I don't even really have beliefs. I'm just allowed to go about my everyday and be a good person. That's good. That's, that, that's excellent. Yeah, I think it's good that that is the default for a lot of people because I think that's a lot of what we're lacking. So if a lot of people do think like that, even if they don't believe in a God, at least they're not harming society, isn't it? So yeah, I see where you're coming from. So uh, how would you, wh where would you say you get your morals from? Probably the fact that I've grown up in a Christian society. There are some societal norms and things that inevitably would have come from Christianity. But I do think that for all the fighting that goes on in the world, so many religions are so, so, so similar. The main rules that you live by day by day are similar and it's kind of just too. You said fighting yeah. and I can detect the Irish accent. Are you <laughs> Irish? Yeah. I think you guys have seen a lot, uh, unfortunately <laughs> and sadly. And well, me not personally, but yeah. I mean the, the Irish, country, the yeah. Irish yeah. people yeah. as a country, yeah. Um, so, you, so what you said was you get your morality from your Christian values that you were grown up with. But what about now? Because you've, I mean, you've discarded Christianity as a theology. So where would you say you get your morality from now? Good question. Again, I wouldn't even say discard it. I'm not a practicing Christian. I grew up in a Christian country, and I guess that I guess that my morality comes from. I, I, I can't be corrected on this, but I believe there's a kind of a golden rule that's come up between all the religions, and it's like, do you want to, do you want your neighbor? What? like to be done to yourself or whatever i said that really badly but okay too, too so you so you're saying you still so you, so what you're saying is you get your morality from the the common denominator of the faiths yeah so you see what's common and that's where you get your morality from do you say you get your morality from liberalism as well or do you rely more on Partly, yes, yes? Yeah. okay is it liberalism and religions 
Oh, is it really? So I'm just looking at the um, the ratio here. Would you say more with regards to religions, or would you say more with regards to liberalism? Okay. All right, great. I'm not going to say I'm out here extreme leftist or not, of course. Liberal, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so going back to the thought experiment, now that I know um, where, where you are roughly on the board. Okay, so would you say if we take everything apart, yeah, and we say, look, I'm going to be as skeptical as I absolutely can. There's one thing that you have to accept and correct me if I'm wrong, and that is that you exist. Yeah. Yeah. You exist. Would you say I exist as well? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, so at the bare minimum, you say that there is existence. Yeah. And secondly, would you say that the uniform, sorry, that the universe is uniform, regular, and stable? And what I mean by this, that the universe is uniform, regular, stable, is, for example, Let's just say I hold my watch out, yeah, and I say and I ask you, how comes this watch is not exploding haphazardly and randomly? What would your answer be to to tell me why is this not randomly exploding or floating away or just disappearing? You know how they say in quantum physics, isn't it? That something can just disappear and something can start floating away. So I would have to disagree with the air. Oh, this is where I'm going to check you up. So the universe is not stable and the universe is not uniform. What was the first thing that you said about the universe? Uniform, regular, stable. So it's not any of it. Okay, I'll come back to that. Yeah, because I haven't finished the point yet. Okay. Yeah, so the point is... Interesting, thank you. Yeah, no, no, great. So uh, if this is not exploding, if this is not randomly just disappearing, you have to assume for us to, because if you're saying it's not uniform, regular, stable, you have to assume that there is enough stability in the universe that you are able to reach home without cars randomly floating, without trees randomly floating. You can't do science. Yeah, exactly. So you won't be able to do science at all. You can't live your daily life. Exactly. And what philosophers say, it's the fact for us to do uh, science, for us to even live our life, the bare minimum that you have to accept is the uniformity, regularity and stability of nature. Because if that was not the case, life, yeah, life is impossible. So you agree with this point, yeah? Okay, so, I'm go so what I'm doing is it's called a logical syllogism. Yeah? If I say, so what's your name? Jennifer. Jennifer. Uh, anyone wearing green uh, loves broccoli. Jennifer is wearing green, therefore Jennifer loves broccoli. Yeah? So this is the, the logical syllogism. So I've said number one, we've acknowledged that there is existence. Number two, we've acknowledged that there is regularity, uniformity and stability in nature. Therefore, there needs to be an existence that explains this uniformity regularity and stability of nature. Would you agree with that? An existence. Yeah, so you yeah. defined that at the beginning, where you acknowledge that you exist and that there is existence. Yeah, so for th that was in premise number one, where you say I exist. You also acknowledge my existence and there is existence around you. And then you're, you're acknowledging that there is some stability. Yeah, otherwise, I mean, we can't go an hour without... There's, there's going to be, you know, breaking news happens every hour. There's going to be breaking news every minute. <laughs> yeah, Big Ben has disappeared. Oh, it's appeared in, it's on top of the Statue of Liberty. It's uh, on top of that, you know, the flame thing. So it's going to be crazy. So because there's existence, there's uniformity, regularity and stability of nature, which is acknowledged by philosophers and scientists because life becomes ridiculous when you can't accept that there's some form of stability. Therefore, there is an existence that explains that. Okay, great. Now, we now have to deal with that existence. So, we acknowledge that there is an existence that explains that. What do you think existence could be? This is... 
spend Let's, my time thinking about it. You know? No problem. If that's not something that you spend time thinking upon, we can do that now, no problem. So be as wild, be, but be try to be as rational and as honest as possible. And again, I'm not leading you, I'm not forcing you anywhere. Just whatever comes to your mind, whatever kind of uh, comes to you, feel free to just say that and then we'll just go from there. No problem. So, with regards to... Okay. Okay, no problem. Hope that process is okay. Okay, so that existence. Oh, that was loud. So, let's just say I have a glass of water. Yeah. Can you say, logically, I can create, say, a watch or I can create a sandwich or your chain from that glass of water? No, not that, but I don't think so. So you're saying in order to make something, you need to have those qualities to begin with. Do you agree with that? Okay, great. Would you accept that in your observation of what's around you, there is consciousness, yeah, there's awareness of our existence there is will yeah, yeah i mean you're willing i mean all you can do is in the middle of that sentence you can say i'm bored of him turn your back and you wander off yeah so you have will he has will he disagreed with me earlier so that again that's a choice that's a will that's a decision making process so we agree there's consciousness we agree there's will yeah and then we agree there is power yeah i'm flexing his muscles a little bit <laughs> I see that, I see that. <laughs> so there's consciousness, there's will, and there's power. So this existence, because there is consciousness, there's will, there's power, it makes sense for that existence to also have consciousness, will, and power. Make sense so far? Okay, great. So we know that there is an existence, it has these attributes, and I'm going to focus more on the power bit, yeah? Because here's what's interesting now. Why do we not randomly see things with power coming into existence and not coming into existence? And this existence itself, what's to stop it from coming into existence and not coming into existence? Yeah, so if you look, there cannot be, I'm going to get a bit technical here, feel free to stop me whenever, there cannot be an infinite regress of powers. Just like there cannot be an infinite regress of dependent things. Yeah, I'm going to break the second one down. Dependency. So I rely on something else. Yeah, that something else re relies on something else. And then it goes ad infinitum. Yeah, however, my argument is you cannot have an infinite regress of these things. Because if you have an infinite regress, that means one thing on another on another. Yeah, it has to end somewhere, isn't it? And we say, and philosophers also agree as well, that we are dependent, there has to be a necessary being. Yeah, that's the end of that chain. Yes, the end of that chain, the necessary being. And then we now acknowledge that that necessary being has consciousness, has will and power, and there's nothing that came before it. So that necessary being has to be one, has to be independent, has to have consciousness, has to have will. Now I'm going to break will down a bit because you might be thinking you just give me a long list of things but bear in mind you've agreed on these things. So will is if we're saying that the necessary being or existence is eternal then he's created or he's formed existences that had a beginning. Like you had a beginning isn't it? Yeah, you had a beginning, your muscles had a beginning, <laughs> yeah all of this had a beginning. So logically it makes sense that someone that's infinite creating something in time that's finite that's also an evidence of will yeah so i'm just reinforcing the argument so we acknowledge that there is and as muslims that's what we believe yeah our ph test for god is 
say he is the one. Allahu Samad, the everlasting and eternal. He does not beget, nor is he begotten. I.e. he doesn't give birth himself, and nor is he given birth to, and there is no one like him. Yeah? Just three, four lines, you'll find this towards the end of the Quran. This is our pH test for God. Yeah, so as a Muslim, this fulfills our criteria for God. Yeah. So that's much like the apostles of the Nicene Creed and Christianity. So like the Nicene... The, 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 the one God called the Almighty, the creation of heaven, or... Unseen and unseen, or... Sorry, it, it's not all yeah. country, yeah, No, no, that's, that's a good like point. That, yeah. yeah, the Nicene Creed came at a time where, before the Nicene Creed, the Christians did believe in monotheism, one God. But the Nicene Creed changed it into a triune God, into the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So uh, here, here's where they will struggle with this form of argumentation, because I'm able to say that there is a necessary being and a necessary existence. For them, they would have to say necessary existences, because there's three. So just like they said Jesus, Jesus died on the cross, they would say it wasn't Jesus, Jesus is actually God. So God also died on the cross. So if God is dead on the cross, who's maintaining and sustaining the universe? Then it becomes a bit different. That's when they will eventually say, look, this is, imagine this, thing. we can't understand it. But we as Muslims, we would say that this, this is creed. This is something that a child is supposed to understand. Uh, somebody like yourself, somebody like yourself, everybody is supposed to understand. If this is the way of life for creation, surely this should be something that's palatable by creation as well isn't it you can't just tell and tell somebody oh there is heaven and hell uh, you so you don't understand this oh no problem you're not supposed to understand it it's, it's, it's too wishy-washy so as muslims our creed is very simple yeah the creed is we testify there's none worthy of worship besides god and muhammad peace be upon him is his messenger yeah and then in parentheses the, the final messenger very simple you can explain that to a child, you can explain that to a toddler, you can explain to an adult, to an OAP. Yeah, and that's how religion should be. So, so far, would you accept that what you've heard are the, the arguments pertaining to a creator that they sound logical and reasonable to yourself? Yeah. Okay, great. So we're working now on a premise that there is a existence, that existence has certain qualities, and those qualities make sense that it is the creator. Great. No, 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 go for it, go for it, yeah, yeah. So, so now we have a creator. Now, Jennifer, would you think that somebody who's created us would be detached from us? Or would you think that there would be some effort being made from the creator? Which of those two would you say makes more sense? The latter, isn't it? Okay, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal something from you, which is the principle that you gave at the start, which was Okay, I take my morality from something that's common in all faiths. So let's look at something that's common in all faiths. Every single faith claims that there is a holy book. Every single faith claims that there is some form of messenger. Do you agree with that? So that makes sense now, isn't it? That, okay, so every single faith from different times, they are saying, okay, we do have a book and there is some form of messenger. So now that's the second criteria. How do we decide which book is correct? How do we decide which prophet? Now, I'm going to take wherever this discussion goes, I'm going to take it wherever you lead me now. Now, you're going to be my leader. Yeah. So in terms of the book, Jennifer, what criteria would you say a book needs to have for you to say, you know what, this one seems like from the, all the others, this one seems like it's from God. So just give me random criteria that's coming to your head. If you get stuck, I can help you out, but initially... So let's say a, a Christian presents you the Bible. Hindu presents the Vedas. And Muslim comes along, gives you the Quran. And then say, Jennifer, pick. Yeah? You know how they do on blind date? Yeah, I don't know if you remember the, the old show with Silla Black, where there would be, yeah, where there would be like a, a, a barrier and there would be a person and there would be three people on the other side and the person would ask all three the questions. So I guess what I'm saying is uh, very similar. Uh, what sort of questions would you say? Mm, does this book have this? 
Does that book have that? I'll, te I'll tell you what he's leading to, and I hope you don't mind it. So what he's leading to is that... So, I know, we, 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 buy, we barely have an airport, and I love this, but no problem. Oh, that's awesome. Where are you guys going? We're back to Ireland. Oh, that's amazing. How long do I have? I, th I think you only have about 15 minutes max. 15, 15 Perfect. minutes with one more. <laughs> yeah. what, what he's leading you at is, for example, if you bring in all the books, right? The Can I just jump in because we've got 10 minutes? Yeah, yeah? because you guys are going to be together anyway, Absolutely. isn't it? I'll okay. transfer the information. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> okay. Excellent. I, I love and it. And I really want to commend the fact that, again, devout Muslim, 100%, but I love the way that you're not in any way, shape, or form. You're truly representing, and I really appreciate that, you're truly representing the true values of Islam. You're not trying to change anyone's culture. You're not trying to change anyone's point of view. All you're trying to do is just have an honest, truthful discussion, and I really appreciate that. There's absolutely no projection from you whatsoever. And again, this comes from a very devout Muslim, so I know exactly Thank you. I appreciate what paths that. you're taking. I really love it. Thank you. Keep that. Yeah? Oh, excellent. We'll finish off the yeah, no, excellent. 12 minutes that we have. Okay, excellent. <laughs> no problem. I'll take eight minutes. Yeah, yeah, I'll take eight minutes. No problem. Because I know sometimes, you know, when your mind, you know, in Islam, even when a person's praying, like we're allowed to cut our prayer short because God knows that, okay, this person's traveling, his mind's going to be, or her mind's going to be all over the place. So, okay, so we're dealing with messages and we're dealing with books now. So with regards to the books, the main thing that you, I mean, uh, rationally, you would arrive to is this book is the same as it was when it was revealed. Yeah, yeah. If, it, if it's been changed, if the people that follow the book can't even acknowledge and take on board that, yes, this book, is the same book that was at the time of the Prophet, uh, then I mean, why why should I accept it? Because it's been changed. And, and yes, I'm. Your point, sorry to interrupt here. No, no, your go point for about it being accessible and understandable to the followers of the faith. Yeah, That's... 100%. Because look, yeah, if God is saying that, look, this is for everybody and, and the consequences and, and uh, the punishment uh, for, for not. Uh, following is, is so severe then then uh, I'm sorry it, it has to that has to be the criteria it has to be accessible yeah I, I can't teach a, a primary school student you know university knowledge it's just not accessible but I can teach addition to everybody like one one that's two okay great so coming back to um, the, the book you have to accept that okay the book is the same yeah as it was when it was revealed and ironically speaking Islam and Muslims are the only one that make this claim that the Quran is the same and it hasn't been changed now This is something that will be accessible to you as well anytime you, you've got a Bible and a Quran just open it up Yeah, you look at the Bible Yeah, you'll open it up and then you can see the preface and in the preface they will say or oh, there are minor and major mistakes in here Yeah, so this is admitted in the preface of the Bible. Yeah Again, that's Old Testament and New Testament. You can pick it up. You could even compare the King James Version with the New International Version. So you can take two versions. Yeah. However, with the Quran, there's nothing like that. Yeah. The Quran doesn't say, oh, there's mistakes in it, there's this in it, there's that in it. Yeah. Same with the Vedas. Yeah. The Vedas don't make this claim either that, oh, our book is exactly the same as it was. Yeah. Now, you might be thinking, oh, that's very nice. Uh, you have a beard, you, you're going to go and pray. It's easy for you to say that. But I can give you an objective way that you can test this. Yeah. We have the oldest fragment. Yeah. There's, there's a fragment of the Quran, which is dated all the way to the time of the Prophet. And that fragment is not in Saudi Arabia. It's not in Iran. It's not in Iraq. It's not in Afghanistan. It's actually in this country. And it's in the University of Birmingham. So the oldest fragment of the Quran is in a non-Muslim country, collected, carbon dated by non-Muslims. And if you were like, yeah, when you're in the airport and you're just sitting and you think, I forgot everything he said, but I do remember one point he said, which was the oldest manuscript of the Quran. Let me Google this and let me see what comes up. You're going to see most likely a BBC article talking about the oldest manuscript and it's going to say University of Birmingham. You cannot do that with Jesus. Uh, you cannot do that with the Bible. You can't do that with the Old Testament. You can't do that with the Vedas. Yeah. However, now when you look into the Quran, how has it been preserved? Because the next thing you're going to say is, ah, that was back in the days. They used to write stuff down. And I remember in primary school when we would have to copy stuff down for display purposes and then use those lines in the back and write it. Sometimes if two lines end with the same word, our eyes would skip a line. And sometimes if I write something down and I introduce a mistake, 
copy something down. He'll copy a mistake. He'll make a mistake and then he'll give the manuscript to you. You'll introduce your own mistake. And then over time, so many mistakes will come in. Yeah, and these, these, this way of missing words and missing lines because of two words being the same, they're actually called homo utelioton and, uh, and paraplepsis. Yeah, these, you can actually find these of critiques of um, script writers. Yeah, you can just check this. The reason why I'm giving you these terms is because this will probably be online. So when you rewatch it, you can check everything that I've said. Yeah, yeah I'm not gonna, this is not something that I won't be able to continue afterwards. So Quran, you might be thinking, okay, but the Quran was copied as well, isn't it? No, I have all the holy books. Quran is the only one that is memorized cover to cover. You might be thinking, okay, I'm impressed. But I'm not too impressed because maybe you need to do that mind palace that Sherlock Holmes does on it no we have kids as young as that have memorized the Quran and approximately according to one study 11 million people on this planet have memorized the Quran Christians I've, I've been here for a long time I put stuff online not a single Christian has come and said we found you one Christian that has memorized the Bible not one Hindu has come and said somebody has memorized the Vedas or not one Sikh that comes and says Somebody has memorized the Guru Granth Sahib, a single one. So, even if uh, some errors have been introduced to the manuscript, somebody who's memorized it will be able to tell you this is this is incorrect. For example, I'm going to try this on him now. Yeah. Now this, a regular individual that you know, but he'll be able to correct me now. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Lam yulid. Lam yulid. Lam yulid. Is it Lam Yulid or Lam Yulad? Lam Yulad. Lam? Yulad. Lam Yalid wa Lam Yakul Lahu Kufra. There you go. Kul huwa Allahu Ahad? Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad. Yeah. Allahu Samad? Lam Yalid. Lam Yalid? Wa Lam Yulad. I was able to correct him. He was able to correct me. These And these are the verses that I quoted at the start. That this is the pH test for God. He is one, he's everlasting, eternal, does not forget, no, he's a begotten. And we were able to just bounce off each other. I was able to correct him. He was able to correct me can't do that with regards to the Bible, you can't do that with regards to the Vedas. So this is that. The third thing and final thing I'm going to leave you with is the Prophet. Yeah, you've got all these people making claims. There's one book, you can grab it before you go, it's called Forbidden Prophecies. Yeah, you've got people, the Mayans, you know, the 2012, they said the world was going to end, the I Ching, the Chinese, and then you've got, uh, you know, the Scientologists and all these guys. Notice their prophecies. And then notice when the Prophet Muhammad makes a prophecy. His prophecy is specific and it's time bound and it can be checked by non-Muslim sources. For example, at the time of the Prophet, the Byzantines were losing against the Persians. However, the Prophet peace be upon him said, no problem. The Prophet peace be upon him said, within nine years, the Byzantines will beat the Persians. Now at that time they were losing, there was a plague, they were being attacked by the plague, they didn't have the uh, artillery, they were, they, they were in problems. However, within nine years, they did beat the Persians. And this can be verified by a non-Muslim at that time, whose transcript we have is called the Chronicles of Theophanes. Yeah, you can Google that, again, you can check the video later on. Chronicles of Theophanes, or Theo Theophanes however you pronounce it. So this again is non-Muslim. So it's not just within the Islamic tradition. And the final final thing that I'm going to leave you with is the the not even the, moon. the cracking of the moon. It's how we preserve the sayings of the Prophet through the chains of narration. I can give you something the Prophet said and I can tell you who narrated from the Prophet, who narrated from him and who narrated from him. And there's a narration of the Prophet that he said, don't kill women and children. Yeah. So the Prophet narrated this and Abdullah bin Umar heard it from the Prophet. Nafi heard it from Abdullah bin Umar. Imam Malik heard it from Nafi. And then we can pick it up from their book. I'm conscious you have to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm just going to, so I, the reason why I just want to give you a few things. So when you watch this video, then you'll be able to check each individual thing that I said. No. Uh, so this is going to be on Sam Dawa. Yeah, Sam Dawa and uh, yeah, just check Sam Dawa. Sam Dawa. Yeah, Sam Dawa, and there's going to be others. There's Dawa to Seoul and SF Dawa, but Sam Dawa will be easy to remember. Yeah, check it out, brother. Thank you so much. My pleasure, my pleasure. Food for thought.
Thank you so much. My pleasure. Have a very safe journey. Take care, inshallah.